In today's episode, we recap day two of the Content Tech Summit, which uh, was the final uh, day of the event. Uh, it started off with Carmen Simon from Mamsey, who was uh, going through a lot of the the neuroscience, uh, very similar to a lot of Roger Dooley's work. Uh, really good presentation in the sense that uh, she did a, a really good job, I thought, at dispelling some of the myths and misconceptions and popular concepts about uh, memory and how the brain works uh, from a marketing perspective. Uh, her big thing is that from birth, actions we take uh, come from, uh, in many ways, from memory, from the memories that we build. And uh, from simple things like, ow, that's a hot stove, don't touch that, to uh, all the preferences we have today. And that attention is the gateway to memory. If you don't have somebody's attention, uh, they can't form memories. And she emphasizes by uh, just having people remember uh, their experiences with brands and things. Uh, if you, if your your brand uh, is memorable, uh, you, you will get more consideration. She did a really good uh, layout, I thought, of breaking out the four types of attention that you can get. So there's attention uh, that comes from either internal, external focus uh, and uh, initiated by uh, the person or initiated by the environment. And there are ways that you can control or catch people's attention in each of those categories. So are there things such as uh, guided actions or introspection or visual search, uh, things that take advantage of the ways people's brains work. One I thought was fascinating was uh, the concept of interference, the idea that if your content or your brand or whatever is too similar to somebody else's, you won't be remembered because there's too much cognitive interference. So style, and tone, uh, logos, identity, and language, especially language, the, the language that you use uh, is really, really important. One of the one of the tests that I remember we used to do in the old agency days was to take a client's campaign or mission statement or whatever and, just, and delete all the names and you know, and swap in a competitor's name um, and see if, if anyone could tell the difference, like what company was it. One of the key takeaways from that event was uh, she said uh, content is like a clothesline. If you put only your stuff on it and just cover the line with your stuff, there's no room for customers or your audience to co-create with you. So uh, be able to b it, try to leave room for the customer. Uh, User-generated content, customer-generated content, anything that's interactive is really important for uh, for people to be able to be involved because as the more involved a customer is, the more memorable that customer is. So I thought that was uh, fantastic. I went to um, an, a session on artificial intelligence because I like to, to see what's, what other people are sharing. And uh, I was very critical of the session uh, because the speaker's knowledge was not, not current, not up to date, which in some fields, uh, there are, uh, in every field of human learning, there is development. But in some fields like AI, you have to be dialed into what's happening right now because the the field changes so quickly and and what the technology is is capable of is is changing even faster so this one speaker uh, was talking about how for example neural networks require massive amounts of data that's that's not a, a a thing anymore you can use neural networks even on very shallow sparse data sets now if you have a good data science background, uh, most of the time you'll find that, uh, yes, you can use a neural network for this task or that task, but it's, it may not be the best choice, right? You can use a frying pan to make soup. If, you, if all you have is a frying pan, you can make soup in it, um, but it's not gonna be as good as if you're using like an actual soup pot. And, and so the same is true in AI and machine learning. Uh, the, every technique has uh, tasks for which it is well suited and tasks for which it is not. Um, so that was that was a, a, a little disappointing, but we'll we'll skip past that one. Um, Allison Wharton, Sean Amster from Front Frontline Education, uh, did a great talk on um, uh, multi-touch attribution. It was interesting. They they spent a lot of time on the marketing technology stack and and the difficulty of connecting and gluing all the pieces together. I thought that was a lot of uh, useful 
listening to their experiences uh, of, <laughs> of trying to get all these systems to talk to each other. And, and they both said the same thing that I know uh, many folks in the MarTech space have said over the years, which is if a vendor, look at the number one choice for, for vendor selection criteria is look at the integrations it offers, right? That was their thing is what does it plug into? Mine has always been what data does it let you export? How does it let you export it? The easier a company makes it to export data, the more trustworthy that vendor is. If a vendor's like, uh, no, we're not going to let you have your data, then uh, that that means that uh, uh, there's something wrong there. They're they're going to uh, they're going to lock you in at some point. Uh, Amy Higgins did a, a fun talk on uh, using sales data to create marketing content. And one of the things, one of the other neat insights from that session I thought was fun was, um, she said, when you talk to sales professionals about you know, what's working, what's not working for them, do not talk to them in a group because you will run into all kinds of issues. Instead, uh, do one-on-one -on -one interviews so that you get honest responses about what's really working, what's not. And uh, you don't always, always get that in a group because of group dynamics. So that was uh, a, a very useful takeaway. And then the day closed out with um, uh, artist, musician, and writer uh, Henry Rollins, who talked at length about uh, infusing efforts, all content marketing efforts, all communications efforts, with uh, moral goodness. Uh, and he talked about a lot, a lot of the experiences he had where he would publish something or write something and, and the impact that it had on people's lives. People would come up to him after shows and... Um, Tell him how uh, his work uh, saved them, uh, saved their life, or meant a lot to their their family, which was a very uh, emotionally moving uh, conversation. He made the very bold statement, which I completely believe is true, that elections are no longer political processes. They are content-driven processes, and that relatively few people have control of the truth, and that's going to be one of the, the major challenges of this century. I had a chance to ask him a question in the Q&A, and I asked him about, you know, how do you differentiate the different types of good? And he said it's, it's mostly commonality of purpose. If we can uh, help people find that commonality of purpose, we can get them on the same page. We can get them unified, uh, as opposed to um, sort of the, the tribalism that we've got going on right now. Uh, overall, though, as... as uh, Pleasantly surprised to, to, to hear such an interesting talk uh, that was on point and on brand about content marketing um, from someone who does not uh, position themselves as a content marketer, as more of an entertainer. Um, so that was a you know that was an interesting way to close up the the event, but well worthwhile. Uh, overall, uh, this this event reminded me of the first year of Martech before it became you know the, the giant. Uh, beast that it is now. Uh, and I love these sort of uh, inaugural events where you get to sit in a room with a few hundred people. I think we had about 450 uh, at this event and really get to know people, really get to talk to people and really get to, to make solid connections, which is difficult to do at larger shows. So this was a, a, a wonderful first start for this event. And uh, I hope to see it succeed in the years to come. Um, as always, if you have comments or questions, uh, you can leave them uh, in the in below. Uh, if you want a copy of my presentation, the video is actually up now. If you go to wherecanigettheslides.com, uh, it'll be up there for a little while. Uh, and as always, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter. I'll talk to you soon. Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.